Hello all and welcome. In this video I will be giving you an overview of my recently completed live steam 464 locomotive. The locomotive is a little engine's light Hudson casting set dressed up to represent the famed New York Central J3A Dreyfus Hudson. Construction of the locomotive started in early 2016 and was completed in December 2023 and has been built primarily by my father and myself, with the occasional outsourcing when we're out of our depth. The overall length of both locomotive and tender is 3.8 metres, or 12 feet and 5.61 inches, and a dry weight of approximately 600 kilograms, or 94.4 stone. The locomotive is 2,060 millimetres, or 6 feet 9.1 inches long, 410 mil or 1 foot 4.14 inches wide and 580 mil or 1 foot 10.83 inches high off the railhead. The locomotive wheelbase is 1580 mil or 5 foot and 2.2 inches. The locomotive is not detailed to a high level. We have tried to find a middle point between practicality and usability against scale and detail, while also considering in the time and financial factors required to complete such an undertaking. As a result, I have numbered the locomotive not after the original 10 Hudsons, but the next number in the sequence. The majority of the locomotive frame and cylinders is as per little engine specifications. Behind the front shroud is a single water pump on the left and an air compressor on the right from Keem steam pumps. Cylinders have a 89mm or 3.5 inch stroke and a 63.5mm or 2.5 inch bore. Hiding behind the crosshead is the lubricators for the pump and compressor. The locomotive is fitted with Baker valve gear instead of the wall shots as standard with the little engine's drawings. Drawings from Brian Keem assisted us in retrofitting the Baker valve gear to work with the little engine's cylinder stroke length and porting. Where able to, rods and linkages have been nickel plated. The locomotive is fitted with skull and disc drivers which were CNC machined at scale off the original drawings, obtained from the New York Central Historical Society. The locomotive's whistle is hidden in the centre of the frame behind the drivers. The locomotive suspension is provided by a system of compensated leaf springs, connecting the driving wheels to the rear truck to assist the locomotive negotiating tight corners. Above the trailing truck is the ash pan, which feeds into a centre chute or can be slid out the side if required. Below the cab is two injectors, one on each side, and the oil tank for the hydrostatic lubricator. The locomotive has been re-gauged from the US 7.5 inch to Australian 7.25 inch. While this was a rather simple fix for the front and rear trucks and for the tender bogies, just bringing in the wheels on the axle shafts, the driving wheels required extra thought. To avoid altering the cylinder and drive rod dimensions, the drivers were made wider to come in closer to the main frame to meet the wheel back to back required for Australian 7.25 gauge while keeping the original outside dimensions to keep in line with the cylinders. On the left side of the cab, we have light switches, hydrostatic lubricators for the left and right cylinders, and the independent or locomotive brake valve. The two injector steam feeds for the left and right injectors are flanking the firebox on their respective sides. From the turret, we have the feed to the hydrostatic lubricator oil tank, the blower, feed to the weir pump, feed to the air compressor, feed to the dyno which will be installed at a later time down the track, the feed to the cylinder drain cocks and the whistle. In the centre we have two water gauge glasses, the pressure gauge and throttle. A butterfly type firebox door is fitted. The grate is a simple bar type in three pieces. Hiding on the right side of the cab is the reverser lever which is connected to the valve gear by a solid steel rod. 
The front of the locomotive has two major parts. The dome nosed section, which is removable, and the lower shroud piece, which is bolted to the front of the frame. The front coupler hatch is removable to allow access to the front coupler pocket, which also serves as a lift point if re-railing was required. To gain access to the smoke box, we undo the screw, then gently lift and pull forward. To put the front back on, it is merely the reverse operation. The smoke box and boiler were manufactured by Live Steam Australia. The boiler is a steel wetback design fitted with 39 copper tubes and has an internal volume of 48 litres or 12.6 gallons. The boiler operates at a maximum of 100 psi. The fire grate measures 230 by 360 mil or 6 by 14.1 inches. A pair of CNC water heater covers sit behind the iconic streamlined front and below them the builder's plate. The skyline streamlining is all one piece and is bolted to the stack at the front and clamped down at the rear to allow for expansion and contraction. On each side of the boiler is two water inlets. Three water lines run behind the side skirting and the running boards while one runs down the right side of the boiler mimicking the prototype. The handrails are automotive brake line and each side holds one of the wires from the cab to the headlight. Three safety valves line the centre of the boiler. Behind the side skirts is a small air tank on each side. The turret covers are custom made and the cab is a mix of fresh parts as well as kit bashing relying on a lot of scaling off drawings. The locomotive is wearing the 1939 livery. The builder's plates are custom made. The front road plate is scaled off the original drawing obtained from the New York Central Historical Society. The blue is approximated off photos and models. Both plates were designed and cast by Stenia Engineering in New Zealand. The road numbers on the cab sides are in vinyl. The New York Central light and dark gray and the aluminium colour is matched automotive two-pack paint. The tender is a kit-bashed Loco Parts Hudson Tender Kit and is 1,650 millimetres or 5 foot 4.96 inches long, 405 millimetres or 1 foot 3.94 inches wide and 650 millimetres or 2 feet and 1.59 inches high from the top of the railhead. The front of the tender has various connections for water, air and power between the locomotive and the tender. The tender runs on a pair of little engines, Commonwealth trucks, which are air braked. Most of the frame is hidden behind the side skirts, which were not part of the original tender kit. Underneath the tender body is two batteries, as well as a water drain and water outlet for the weir pump and from the hand pump. The water scoop hasn't been included but may be a future addition down the line. The rear of the tender is two air connections for brakes and air supply as well as a coupler pocket which will take both a bar and a knuckle type couplers. The rear of the tender kit has been modified to allow the extended body to be modelled. The top of the tender kit has been cut off to allow the streamlined roof to be fitted. The roof was constructed in two pieces, the large coal bunker section and the smaller rear section. The front roof section has two air tanks to supply the train brake system. In the front of the tender lies the coal bunker and on the top the brake valve and water controls for the two injectors. The seat locates into the top of the coal bunker area and is free to slide back and forth along the section. At the rear is the water fill hatch, which has been modified to match the prototype. Through the hatch, access can also be gained to the hand pump if required. Inside the main tender body is three water tanks holding approximately 120 litres or 31 gallons of water. The tender body is wearing the 1939 livery. The silver lining and lettering is done in aluminum leaf. The other lettering and road numbers on the rear of the tender is in vinyl. The New York Central light and dark grey colour is colour matched in automotive two-pack paint. The locomotive headlight is a simple household downlight fitted into the housing. 
the headlight has both a high and low setting. There is in-cab lighting and lighting underneath the running boards illuminating the driving wheels as well as to assist with servicing the locomotive. The tender is fitted with a Pile National tender backup light from the back shop and is dual in colour allowing for use as both a headlight or a tail light. In the second part of the video I will explain the process that we used in construction of the streamlining and the customised parts of the locomotive and tender. The design of the front dome was relatively simple. A drawing of the dome and fins was available from the New York Central Historical Society and was simply scaled down. To form the dome, we turn to metal spinning, a process in which sheet metal is formed over a die whilst being spun in a lathe type setup. We reached out to a family member proficient in wood turning to create a timber die for us. We did have a go ourselves but lacked the required knowledge and materials to pull it off. We then found a manufacturer specialising in metal spinning in Melbourne, Victoria and sent our die with some instructions to them. We ordered three domes to be made, allowing for spares if required. The fins were drawn up in CAD and CNC cut out of a small piece of plate steel. The headlight was turned out of a, a piece of round brass. The fins and headlight are merely bolted to the back of the dome. I was unable to find any drawings or plans of the lower shroud below the nose. I scaled dimensions off other drawings depicting the locomotive from the front and side. From this, I constructed a skeleton for the shroud using cork flute, which was able to sit on the locomotive front to check its fit and proportions. Once happy, we reached out to a local custom car builder specialising in hot rods and bodywork. The locomotive and prototype were taken to his workshop, which from there he formed the front shroud. The shroud was built around a piece of 40 by 40 mil RHS, which allows strength and a solid anchor point to mount the running board stairs and to attach the piece to the locomotive itself. For the skirt that covers the rear portion of the locomotive, I again turned to the side profile drawing and scaled dimensions off that to develop a template in cork flute. Once happy with the design and shape, the shape was cut out using CNC. Half round brass edge was then formed to the shape along the edge and silver soldered on. For the top skyline piece, I was back again to the side profile drawing. I really used this drawing a lot for the scaling across the locomotive. From there, I developed a prototype out of cork flute. The prototype highlighted some anomalies caused by the fact that the real locomotive has a tapered boiler while ours is just straight. I then built a second smaller version created to be closer to the actual profile of the piece. Then back out to the auto shop for some more metalworking magic. Once finished, we have then added additional pieces to represent the various hatches and banding found across the top of the top streamlining piece. The tender roof was constructed in two pieces using the same methodology. Several drawings were available from the New York Central Historical Society which greatly aided in this design. Firstly, the profile of the curvature of the roof was scaled off drawings and templates were created to allow us to visually check against the tender body. These would then be CNC cut out of heavy sheet metal and used as ribs to form the roof. Then the roof surface and its various openings were scaled off drawings, then CNC cut off sheet metal. The roof sheet was then formed over the top of the ribs and welded together. In the centre of the tender, there is a transition between the two roof profile. This was achieved by creating a wooden die of the required shape, then panel beading sheet metal over the die to create the desired shape. This piece was then welded to the rear of the front roof section. The roof takes advantage of a 10mm lip to slot into the top of the tender body to be held in place. To recreate the extended tender body on the end of the tender, this required cutting off the rounded rear of the original tender kit. A new rear piece was constructed to sit on the inside of the two tender walls to allow the extended end to butt up against the cut end of the tender. The holes for bolts and rivets were copied across onto the new pieces of the old to allow the new rear assembly to be riveted together. The lower skirt on the tender was scaled off drawings from the New York Central Historical Society. Due to the 90 degree fold at the top, the curve in the skirt could not be achieved by rolling, but is comprised of several smaller folds over the course of the curve. Four pieces 
two for each side were made, butted together and welded to create one piece per side. With the completion of the locomotive, we now turn to our next project, which of course will be carriages for the Hudson. A full century consist would be an unrealistic endeavour. The plan is to build eight carriages, comprising of a postal car, century series dormitory and club car, city of series sleeper, cascade series sleeper, 38 sitter dining car, an imperial series sleeper, county of series sleeper, and an island series observation car. I hope you have enjoyed this overview of the locomotive and thanks for watching.